How will Trump's comments about women and sexual assault translate into poll numbers? Our next guest says support for the Republican nominee among independent and women voters could continue to erode. You think? Let's bring in Tom Bevan. He's the co-founder and publisher of Real Clear Politics and RealClearPolitics.com. That's where we get the average of the polls for you guys all the time, and it really is a, you know, a great look at how things stand. How do things stand, and, and what just happened? <laughs> well, you saw my, my trenching analysis. It's not good for Trump, obviously. It's been a bad, uh, it'd been a bad previous, you know, seven to ten yeah. days. He had lost ground. Uh, Clinton had managed to, you know, he pulled this race almost close to even. He was down only about a point, point and a half in the national. Went in, some, national, swing in some swing states. And then we saw his position erode. He lost ground among independents. He lost ground um, among suburban white women. And um, obviously what's happened in the last 24, 36 hours is only going to continue that. Now, we'll see what happens in the debate tonight. But, but, and we won't have any poll numbers until probably middle to end of next week that'll really give us a first look at how badly he's been damaged. And by that you mean uh, like four or five days away from now? Correct. Yeah. Because they, if they start the polling in the middle of this, they got to get it in, tabulate it, and then bring it to you. Right. And I mean, it's... When you have an event that happens on a Friday afternoon and you've got a debate that's happening on Sunday, I mean, it's, just, it's all going to be mixed together, right? Yeah. And so the pollsters will probably go into the, go into the field, uh, hopefully for us, you know, Monday, so we can have something by Thursday or Friday to take a look at. His hardcore support, supporters, according to most of the polls that I looked at, and you talked about this in the commercial break, they've been solid and unwavering. They have, and I think that will continue. I mean, that's one that's been one constant, regardless of the whatever the controversy's been. They've stuck with them, male and female. And mm -hmm. I, I suspect we've seen some anecdotal evidence uh, of female Trump supporters that, in the wake of these revelations, are, are you know they're still with them, and I suspect they will stay with them. It's it's the more moderate, uh, less ideological types who don't like Clinton have have been sort of you know flirting with the idea of Trump, leaning toward him, maybe taking a step away. Um, I think this is going to scare some of those folks off, maybe move them into Hillary Clinton's column. Um, and that's something he needs to keep the gender gap to a minimum. And he certainly needs to win with independence. Romney won independence by five points and lost the election. Trump needs to do at least as well, if not better, uh, this time around. And right now he's losing ground there. They had said in their postmortem from the last cycle that they need to do better with blacks and Hispanics. It seems like they've now realized, okay, that didn't go very well. One place where Republicans have always been so solid is evangelicals. And I wonder how this is playing among that crowd. Not well. I mean, that's one of the groups that he struggled with. I mean, they've stuck with him for the most part, although there's been a real debate within the evangelical community about this, a uh, very heated debate. Uh, but that's one of the areas that he, you know, this is not going to stead him well with, with any part of his coalition, really. And so that's why, um, because of the amount of media coverage that it's getting, uh, nonstop, uh, it'll, it'll absolutely, everybody's heard of it. Uh, it'll be part of, uh, it'll be part of that coverage and, and part of what is filtered in, I mean, literally, 100%, uh, the way that it's being played across the media um, is going to filter across all those all those demographic groups. He has an opportunity, at least, to stop the bleeding tonight. This is the big. This may be more have more audience than the last one. I think the first five or ten minutes of this debate is crucial. Mm -hmm. Trump has to, I think, address it head on, right up front, make some sort of contrite, sincere apology, um, and then try and move past it and and turn the debate back to Hillary Clinton's record. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Trump can say, look, it's you know, I said some bad words. I'm sorry. I'm you know, ashamed of that, but look, are you really going to hold my words from 11 years ago against me versus Hillary Clinton's record of the last 11 years or whatever? He's, it's got to be something like that um, that allows the public, gives them the space to forgive him if they're willing to do that, and then puts the, the debate back on the territory that he wants it to be on, which is her, not him. Tom Bevins, Real Clear Politics. Thank you. You bet.